you know, Diaz has obviously caught a lot more innings, but you just look at, let's go with the month of August, who has caught the majority of the innings, or we even go just the second half, we'll take a look at that first, who has caught the most in the second half, and for the second half of the 2019 season, Stonks has caught 208 in the third innings, Diaz 194 and two-thirds, and that discrepancy gets even further if you look in the month of August, for the month of August, Jacob Stonks has caught 142 and two-third innings, while Diaz is at 96 and a third. And again, with the catching being such a, you know, I wouldn't say hot commodity, but, you know, necessary commodity, there will be a taker for Diaz, and, you know, it's not going to get us a haul or anything. But moving on from him, I believe, is the right decision at this point in time. Uh, the, the power has all but disappeared again. One home run in 84 games this season, 10 home runs in 82 last season, a 302 OBP, 247 batting average. Uh, defensively, has been a nightmare, and... You know, it, it's time to, to realize all this and say, okay, we're moving in a different direction. That has to be the, the, the mindset that, that uh, the Pirates have and the mindset that I think Neil Huntington is starting to have. He said, you know, we're going to try to push these guys forward. But what I really believe that means is, okay, Stallings is going to start getting the majority of the playing time. Diaz, and he really has. Uh, Diaz will continue to probably catch Brault and Agrizal, but in terms of of the rest of the guys, that will be Stallings' job. Uh, and Stallings, you know, is going to be the, the guy moving forward for the remainder of the season. We'll see what they do in the offseason, but I would I would quite honestly be shocked if Diaz is on this roster opening day 2020. Uh, I'll say that right now. I would be shocked because, again, was last year the anomaly or is this year the anomaly? Again, the, there's some recency bias there too, but I believe it is time to move on. And it sucks because heading into the season, we thought and we talked about Cervelli and Diaz were going to be an awesome combination. Cervelli's concussion injury issues, you know, ended his Pirates career. They did. Uh, and, it, and his playing time, he didn't play that well. And then Diaz had an opportunity to say, okay, this is my job. I'm going to take it. And he did the exact opposite. And he uh, has lost my faith, certainly. He has lost faith in the GM. And, you know, that's ultimately going to result in him most likely not being on the Pirates in 2020. Um, and again, uh, the candidates that we think I can look at are Kybert Ruiz and a potential trade that would probably be with Felipe Vasquez. And I don't know if they'd be willing to do that. But if they want to not make any you know, selling moves, then it would be a Travis Darno or Jason Castro. Or if Zanino is a. In, if Zanino is non tender, which I would love, the Pirates could certainly go after him as well. Uh, Neil Hunter has done a great job of acquiring catchers in the past with. Most notably, though, Russell Martin and Francisco Cervelli. So, you know, I, I trust him to go out there and find us a, a good catcher to to be the next, you know, Cervelli in Pittsburgh, to be the next Russell Martin. Because uh, it's went from Martin to Cervelli, and I, I was hoping it was going to go to Diaz after that, but that is not the case. Uh, I don't think it's going to go to Stallings. So, we will see what the future holds at the catcher position for the Pirates. It's a very important position, like, uh, to, to have that, that solid defensive guy behind the plate who is in command of the pitching staff who the pitchers trust, who they you know enjoy pitching to. Stallings has been that guy, but the bat, you know, he's been more consistent than Diaz, but it's starting to slow down, uh, certainly. So, again, it, it's going to be a very important, and we're going to have plenty of time to discuss this over the course of the offseason. Candidates and the substantiated rumors that we get uh, out of the of the offseason, that's that's the exciting part of the MLB offseason, and I'm not saying that I'm ready for us to dive into complete offseason discussions yet, but uh, with the team sitting uh, where they are at, 19 games under 500, uh, heading into September, obviously they're not in a position to compete for anything, so you know it, it's nice to, to dream and envision what the 2020 season is going to hold. And obviously, what we dream up in the off season uh, rarely comes true in the season because I mean we, we jumped up a lot of stuff this this past off season of what this team could be, and know that that's what off season discussions are for. What could this team be? What could they be? It's not what they will be. It's more of a could, and a lot of ifs are going to be answered. And Neil Huntington is going to be busy this off season, so expect a move to be made at the catcher position. And again, I would be shocked if Elias Diaz is on this roster in 2020. I would be absolutely shocked. 
The Pittsburgh Pirates' three-game winning streak came to an end on Monday night. On Monday night, the Pittsburgh Pirates and Philadelphia Phillies kicked off a three-game series at Citizens Bank Park in the city of brotherly love. The Pirates headed the series on the heels of a three-game weekend set of the Cincinnati Reds. While it looked promising that the Pirates would continue their hot stretch on Monday night, late any bullpen woes led to their undoing in a 6-5 loss. This drops the Pirates to 14-32 since the All-Star break and 58-77 and overall this season. Joe Musco started the game for the Pirates and turned in a bounce-back performance after struggling against the Washington Nationals last week. In six innings of work, Musgrove allowed just two runs on five hits. He did not walk a batter, and he struck out six. The lone runs Musgrove allowed came on a two-run home run in the fourth inning off the bat of Brad Miller. In his first at-bat, Miller lined out to center field. Other than these two at-bats, Musgrove limited hard contact throughout the night in what was an excellent start. Big Joe also helped himself with the bat on Monday, with the Pirates trailing 2 nothing in the top of the fifth inning. Musgrove lined a base hit off the left field wall to score Adam Frazier. Off the bat, it appeared Musgrove had hit his first career home run while he just missed a dinger. It did cut the Phillies lead to 2-1. to one. Jason Vargas started for the Phillies and was cruising until the seventh inning. Vargas had allowed just one run on five hits and zero walks through six innings of work, but in the seventh, the wheels came off. Melky Cabrera started uh, the inning he singled uh, on a calm run double to tie the game at two. After Vargas uh, walked Jacob Stongs, he was lifted for the lefty Jose Alvarez. Following a sacrifice bump by Frazier, Josh Bell was intentionally walked and Kevin Newman recorded a two-run single. Newman's hit gave the Pirates a four to two lead. With the Pirates now in front, Francisco Liriano was summoned to pitch the bottom of the seventh inning. Liriano would retire the Phillies in order to keep the score at 4-2. to two. Richard Rodriguez replaced Liriano in the eighth. He struck out the first two batters he faced before coming unglued. Rodriguez allowed a solo home run to Bryce Harper and a two-run shot to former Pirate Corey Dickerson. These two home runs gave the Phillies a 5-4 to four lead after eight innings of play. With one out in the ninth, Bell stepped to the plate. Bell was only in the lineup due to remain in the game as part of a double switch. After his pinch hit intentional walk in the seventh, Bell proceeded to crush the first pitch he saw off of Philly closer Hector Norris to straightaway center field. Bell's 33rd home run of the season tied the game at five. In a perplexing decision, Clint Hurdle went to Chris Stratton in the bottom of the ninth inning. This came despite both Cuny Kella and Felipe Vasquez still being available in the bullpen. Stratton walked two of the first three Philly batters of the inning and allowed a single to load the bases with just one out. To his credit, Stratton then rose to the occasion. He got Reese Hoskins to pop out in foul territory and struck out Harper to send the game to extra innings tied at five. In the 10th inning, Stratton found himself in trouble again with two on and no one out. Gene Segura hit a fast dropping ball to shallow center field, but Starling Marte made an excellent running sliding grab to catch the ball. He then fired the ball to second base where Newman made a great pick to finish off the double play. Despite four walks, Stratton pitched two scoreless innings of relief. In the 11th inning, Michael Felice was summoned to pitch for the Pirates. Felice has been great out of the Pirate bullpen of late, but he got burnt on Monday night. Despite being ahead in the count against the free-swinging Sean Rodriguez, Felice missed down the middle with a fastball. The ex-Pirate parked the Felice fastball in the left field seats for a walk-off home run. The second game of the series was on Tuesday night. Stephen Brault, a 3.98 ERA, 4.23 FIP, continued his excellent work uh, taking the ball for the Pirates. Veteran Drew Smiley, uh, who has struggled mightily this season, took the ball for the Phillies and the Pirates. They won game two, but again would drop game three by a score of 12-3 to three and drop the season series as well. You know, Monday night was a very frustrating game because, you know, we had a 4-2 to lead. You know, two outs with Richard Rodriguez pitching, who has been great as of late. Bryce Harper Hermers, okay, 4-3. to three. And then, you know, a walk and Corey Dickerson numbers, which hurt even more, 5-4. to four. And then when Josh Bell tied it, you know, and then Chris Stratton battling through those two innings. And then Michael Feliz, who's been great, you know, he got burnt. He did in the Pirates. They, they dropped the game. It was a, a definite heartbreaking loss. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, you know, with, with the Pirates being where they're at, wins and losses, they matter. Don't get me wrong. I love wins and I hate losses. But, well, we, we can't get too caught up in losses because at this point, you know, what does it really matter? It's, it's nice to see wins, and we'll talk about and we'll celebrate all the wins we get because they've been hard to come by since uh, July the 12th. But, uh, you know, 
it, it, w- it was definitely tough to see Corey Dickerson and Sean Rodriguez, you know, play the way that they played and play such big roles in that win because, you know, we know how valuable, especially Dickerson was to, to this team's success last year. Um, but glad he's doing well with Philadelphia. Okay, so let's take a look at the the week ahead for the Pirates. So today they've got the Rockies on tap, 8-10 tonight. Joe Musgrove gets the start against Tim Melville tomorrow afternoon. And Stephen Brault, still the pitcher, is to be determined for the Rockies. Maybe they go to a bullpen day. Not sure what they're going to do with that, but it would be nice to see uh, Stephen Brault, um, you know, continue his success. Then they've got uh, Miami comes to town for a three-game weekend uh, week set. They are off on Monday as they travel back to Pittsburgh. Tuesday, it's to be determined against Sandy Alcantara. I would imagine uh, that start would go to, to Mitch Keller. Uh, then the start on uh, Tuesday would probably go to Trevor... <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, it would go to Trevor Williams on Tuesday. Uh, and then the, still be to be determined for that Wednesday, Trevor Williams would start. Thursday, it would probably go to Dorio Agrizal. And then they welcome the Cardinals in for a weekend set. So we've got the rest of this Rockies series, the Marlins, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then the Cardinals for the weekend. As the Pirates head into September, this is their final game of August today. And... You know, uh, the first half of August was obviously not pretty with, uh, you know, the sweep to the Mets, uh, sweep Brewers, uh, the Cardinals sweep, and then we won the series against the Angels, uh, lost the series to the Cubs, lost the series to the Nationals, swept the Reds, lost the series to the Phillies, looking to maybe sweep the Rockies and out, end out August, but, you know, not been a pretty month, not been a pretty second half, but again, if we can have a September where we're having a winning month, see what uh, we need to see. With our September cops, I'm very excited for that. Like that's what I've been waiting for 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 all of August. Just come September, come so we can so we can see what we have in the in the September cops because you know that's what's going to be exciting the remainder of the 2019 season. See how these guys fare. Uh, see how they do it against other major league talent. You know, play some spoiler. Uh, the Marlins series won't allow us to play a chance for spoiler. We'll 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 see what we do. It would be a nice little sweep to get there. But the Cardinals series. You know, that, that can change the division. The Cubs are only a game back of the Cardinals in the NL Central. So we can definitely play spoiler there and play spoiler in the wild card. There's opportunities to do that down the stretch. And, you know, the, it, it, the Pirates have nothing to lose. So they go out there and they play free. Uh, and we'll see where they're at. And, you know, it, it's still baseball. And baseball is the greatest sport in the world. And obviously, if you're listening to this late in the podcast, you probably agree with me on that statement. But all in all, it's been fun doing this again. Bunker Booth, my name is Benson Fector. Thank you all for tuning in, and we will see you here same time, same place, next Saturday. However you listen to this, wherever you listen to it, we certainly do appreciate it. I would very much so appreciate if you give me a follow on Instagram at Box Dugout. All the latest updates, content for the Pittsburgh Pirates, it is all there. We are the best, uh, most active uh, pirate page on Instagram, so if you want to do that. Uh, we are the fastest uh, and largest no, we, we are the largest and fastest growing Pirates podcast out there. Again, my name is Benson Fector. This has been Bucket Booth. We'll see you here next Saturday. As always, let's go Bucks.